Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video with the Triumph Sprint 900. Now, obviously if you've been following along from the beginning you'll have seen all the different things that I've done uh, to this bike in order to bring her back into road use. Obviously she was laid up for a few years um, and it needed a little bit of remedial work just to make her road worthy again and obviously we've done that. Now, um, what I did was MOT'd this bike uh, last week and she absolutely sell through. Absolutely no problems whatsoever, no advisories, and on the way there, she performed faultlessly and rode like an absolute champ. Um, pulling really, really well, and yeah, I'm really, really pleased with the way she, uh, way she performed. Now, this is gonna be the last of these uh, videos with the Triumph. Obviously, we're moving on to other things. I've got other bikes, like the ZX9R project. You know, please feel free to go and have a look at that. I'll leave the link up in the top corner. Um, hopefully, you'll find something there to uh, entertain. Um, we've got the SV still, um, obviously that's, uh, that's an ongoing project. But yeah, one thing I want to do with this, the last thing I want to do before I give it back to uh, its owner, which is my wife's uh, stepfather, um, is I want to carry out a change of the brake and clutch fluid on this bike because it's the only thing that I haven't done. Now, obviously, if you've been following from the beginning, you'll know that I rebuilt the rear caliper, so that had a change of the fluid um, as part of that process. However, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the fluid in that again to bring it all in line so that they're all due at the same time. Um, because it should be changed roughly every two years, give or take, or when it's particularly dirty. If you look through the little sight glass and the, the fluid looks absolutely boggy, it's worth changing it anyway. Um, at the end of the day, it's your break, so it's your life. So, um, thank you for stopping by. Let's, uh, let's crack on and get into it. <laughs> Right then, okay, so what I'll do first is I'm going to do the front brake then I'm going to do the clutch, and then I'm going to do the rear brake. The rear brake's a little bit more involved because the bodywork has to come off in order to access the reservoir, which is somewhere over here under the seat. If you take the seat off, you can see the top of the reservoir. However, it's kind of buried beneath one of the seat rails and quite hard to get to. And obviously, if you didn't go to the effort of taking off the side panels, when you mess around with brake fluid, there's always a risk that you'll spill it. So it's better off to give yourself as much access as we possibly can. So that's what I'll do. But as I said, we'll start with the front brake, then we'll do the clutch, and then we'll move on to the rear. Now, one thing I do want to point out, um, when I do um, complete fluid changes like this, the method I prefer to use is to drain the entire system first and then top it up. Now, I often get people um, commenting um, on my videos, especially when I've been doing this, saying that I'm an idiot and that I don't need to drain the system. You literally just take the front fluid out, put clean fluid in and draw it through. Yes, I, I agree, that will work. This is the method that I prefer to employ when I do the job. And one of the reasons why I do it that year, year, in that manner is because if you're doing a hose change, that is what you would have to do. You would be bleeding a dry system. So that is also one of the reasons why I do it like that. So that if somebody were to be um, changing their hoses and wanted to know how to bleed it most effectively, I'm giving them the method by which to do so. So if you want, if you want to comment um, below about that, then feel free, um, but it will probably be given a stiff ignoring. Anyway, uh, enough of that. Let's move on. What we're going to do is we need to remove the cap from the uh, front brake fluid reservoir um, to give us access. But what we'll do is obviously we'll turn the bars like this to make it level. As you can see, that's about as level as we're going to get. Um, we'll take the cap off. But what we want to do is we want to protect this area. So I will be putting some uh, workshop tissue all around this area just in case we spill any and then it doesn't drop onto paintwork or anywhere we don't want it because obviously, as you know, brake fluid is highly corrosive and it will lift paint if it's allowed to settle on it. So um, yeah, we'll, uh, I'll get some tools out. We'll get these off, lift the cap off and then what we'll do is we'll uh, get some tools and pull the fluid out of the system. Okay, let's get plenty of this around. That way, we know we're not going to damage anything. Now we've done that, we can whip the lid off.
Right, under the lid we've got a diaphragm and this seals, this seals the reservoir from atmosphere, stops fluid leaking out, also stops water getting in. Now if we look inside there, that, uh, that fluid is quite dark and horrible um, compared to clean, uh, which obviously we'll show you in a moment. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go down to the caliper, I'm going to open the bleed uh, nipple and I'm going to draw all the fluid out through that caliper. Then what we'll do, we'll go to the caliper on the other side and we'll do the same for that line. So we're taking all the fluid out of both lines. Okay, on these uh, four pot nissins, the bleed nipple is just up here, uh, just up here. Um, and what we're going to use is my Old Faithful vacuum pump. Now, uh, again, I, I rate these vacuum pumps, these are so cheap to buy, yet so, so useful. And they will save you um, an awful lot of time. Um, when it comes to bleeding and things like this. Uh, what I'll do, I'll leave a link in the description so you can go and check them out yourself. They're only about 12, 13 pounds. Not expensive at all. And that's it assembled. Right, now what we've got to do is get our spanner on the nipple. Obviously, it comes with all these different adapters. You just choose the one that fits onto your bleed nipples, like so. And then, simply pull up a vacuum and then crack the nipple off. And then maintaining the vacuum, and as you can see, you can, you can see the fluid coming out into the hose now, just like so. And then up here, as I pull it through, we'll see the fluid level drop. As you can see, it's going down. And all the old fluid being pulled out of the system and then what it does is it collects in this little cup just here and as you can see that is a horrible colour absolutely disgusting and we'll keep going until such time as no more fluid comes you don't have to keep pumping it like this it holds its vacuum um, and as you can see it's still pulling it through so as long as there's a vacuum it'll keep pulling the fluid through uh, there's very little left in the reservoir now that's a tiny little bit And there's a little bit of, it looks like there's a little bit of sediment in that as well. I can hear air coming in through, yeah, there's a little bit of air coming in through the reservoir. And now we're getting loads of bubbles and not so much fluid. I think we're almost there. It doesn't take long at all, it only took about a minute, minute and a half. And then, all we've got to do, close the nipple up, take the valve off, and then repeat that on the uh, on the left hand caliper. I won't, uh, I won't bother filming that, obviously the process is exactly the same. Um, all we're doing now um, is then just taking the fluid um, out of this line. We've obviously drained this one, we just need to drain this one here now so that's what I'm going to do and I'll bring you back in. Right that is all the fluid out of both calipers out of both lines and the reservoir and what I've done is I've emptied the fluid out of my tool into my dirty brake fluid jar which I just keep to one side and then I empty it when it's full. Right now we're here what we need to do is just give the inside of the reservoir a good clean out with some clean tissue because these do get absolutely filthy inside. So just make sure any sediment or anything that's settled inside is all removed. Um, to be fair, this isn't actually too bad in here. Um, I've seen a lot worse. What I'll do, I think, is I'll just get my screwdriver and just get into the corners just to make sure we've got it all out. Here's a little bit of grey muck. That's what we need to get out. Just make sure it's all out, and then uh, we know it's not going to end up in the. Yeah, see what see what I mean? That's the kind of sediment that we're talking about. That's got to be removed. So 
and just make sure we get it all out before we move on and put any clean fluid in because obviously if we put clean fluid in to a dirty reservoir we're just making the fluid dirty and I think we're there that looks pretty good right there we are let's just clean the sight glass There, and as you can see, inside there now, it's lovely and clean. Um, nice and silver, uh, and we're ready to uh, ready to top that up with um, brake fluid. Now, brake fluid, you should always um, use whatever your manufacturer recommends. Generally, it will be DOT4 um, brake and clutch fluid. Obviously, you use this for either side. Um, what you want to do is you want to take the fluid from a sealed container where possible, because obviously, as soon as you open and break the seal, on that container it's then open to atmosphere regardless of whether the lid's on it or not what you've got to remember is that brake fluid is obviously hygroscopic and that means that it will absorb moisture out of the air moisture getting into brake fluid ended up in your braking system can cause you problems main problem being obviously whilst uh, water itself isn't compressible um, gases are now water has a very low boiling point compared to brake fluid um, if the water in brake fluid, if there was water, should I say, in brake fluid, and it boiled, that then turns to steam, which is a gas. That gas is then compressible, which would lead you to have braking problems, brake fade, etc., etc. Not to mention, obviously, water in your brake fluid um, will corrode things. So, yeah, so where possible, obviously, you want to make sure that you take that fluid from a sealed container. Right, what we'll do now, I'm going to, I have a little jug which I use specifically for brake fluid even though obviously brake fluid writing keeps coming off because um, the uh, the brake fluid does actually lift the pen um, but yeah this I, I reserve this jug purely for brake fluid what I do I take it out of the big container transfer it into the small one because it's easily more easily managed with this little spout these are very very cheap not very expensive whatsoever and well worth it for a job like this especially if you do it quite a few times so uh, yeah what I'll do I'll get some fluid in my jug We'll get, this, uh, we'll get this reservoir topped up and bleed the front lines up. Okay, so I've got my jug with a uh, nice clean brake fluid in. And what we're gonna do is I'm simply gonna top up this reservoir. Um, I'm going to overfill it, to be perfectly honest. Um, and that won't matter because we are gonna pour some fluid through. And as you can see, the color of this is completely different to the color of the stuff that we took out. We'll get as much in as I can. And there we go. We'll go with that for the moment. Put the little cap back on me, Joe. Right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to pull some. Uh, we're going to pull the fluid down to the caliper. What I'm doing here. So I'm just exercising the lever slightly. I don't know if you can see just down in there. You can see the master cylinder pushing backwards and forwards in, in the hole. And what I did was, you, just before the camera came over, a couple of bubbles were expelled from there. So what I've actually done is I pulled a little bit of fluid down into the master cylinder and pushed the air out of that master cylinder. So what I need to do now is go down to the caliper, get the pressure tool, pump the vacuum up, open the nipple, and it should suck the fluid through the system. With the 8mm spanner again, what I'm going to do, stick it on a nipple, Take the tool, pop that on as well, pull the vacuum up, just like so, and then open her up. And then maintain, you can see the fluid coming through, and all I've got to do is maintain the vacuum. At the same time, what I'll do is I need to keep an eye on the fluid level up here. It is dropping, and when we get to a certain point, all I'm going to do is stop the nipple and that line now will have no air in it. So what I need to do now is top up the fluid here again and then do the same on the other side.
And there we go. That is the front braking system completely bled. So what I'll do now, quickly just give the lever a little pull, see how she feels. Oh yeah, she feels good. Yeah, that's a good feeling lever that. Now, what I need to do, put the lid back on, and then that is the front brakes done. Then we'll move to the clutch side. Right then, now we've got an absolutely lovely lever here. What I'm gonna do is replace all of this hardware back into position. And the top cap. Right, so get the screws back in. And just gently nip them up. They don't need to be over tight. Because don't forget, they do have to come out again at some point. And then we can remove our tissue, give it a good wipe down, and there we are. That is that job done. That's the front brakes. Absolutely lovely. All we're going to do now, move on to the clutch side. I don't think that's been changed for a long time. Right, down here on the left hand side of the bike we've got the clutch slave cylinder and on the top here is the bleed nipple. Um, and this is where we're going to uh, pull the fluid through from, much like we did with the brakes. Um, I'm going to pull all the fluid through uh, out of the line back into my tool um, and then obviously we'll go through the process of topping it up and then um, and then uh, bleeding it again. So what I'll do, get my, get my tool on the clutch again. I will, I will build up some pressure. Just like so. And then crack the nipple and here comes the fluid. And as we can see, maintain the pressure and the level is dropping really quickly and there you go you can hear air is now being sucked in and the pressure's dropped because there's no fluid left in there so what we'll do now we'll close it up take the tool off I'll empty this into my little jar and then what we'll do we'll clean the reservoir just like we did on the brake side we'll give it a good clean inside because that looked pretty stinking that fluid give it a good wipe out and then we'll put fresh fluid in and then bleed it through in here look there's absolutely loads of sediment and you can see that i'm making marks in it with my with my screwdriver so this was well due replacement of this fluid yeah there's a lot of a lot of gunk in here so what I'll do, give it a good clean out, give it a good clean out and then uh, what I'll do, I'll bring you back when we come to start the bleeding process. See you in a sec. Right, now it's uh, lovely and clean inside the reservoir. As you can see all that sediment is gone. What I'm going to do is add some fluid. There's a difference between this fluid and what came out, that's for certain. And now what we're going to do is we are going to um, bleed the system through. Um, now clutches can be a little problematic. Um, whereas with brakes you can tend to use a piece of tube and a jar and just pump the lever much like I'm doing now. Uh, clutches tend to be a little bit more um, difficult to bleed, so unless you've got a vacuum uh, bleeder 
I would um, I would recommend you don't. Uh, vacuum vacuum bleeders are kind of a necessity, really. For clutches, you can of course back bleed it if you wish, which means you force the fluid in from this end and push it up. Uh, that is one method that you could use, um, and you'll probably have some success with that if I'm being really honest. Okay, right, let me go and grab the tool and uh, we'll start pulling some fluid through. Okay, let's get my spanner on, get the tool in place. And then, just as before, get the pressure up and crack the nipple open. And here we go, as you can see, we've got plenty of fluid coming through. And I'm just keeping an eye on the reservoir. And she's dropping down quite quickly. So I'm going to close her off. And I'm going to top her up. Because we've still had an awful lot of air coming out of that nipple. And what we don't want to do is obviously run the reservoir dry because we'll be able to start all over again. Top her up again. Again, I'm overfilling it. Build some more pressure. Crack her open again. Just keep going. So such times we get fluid through without bubbles in it. Probably off the top of the reservoir a couple of times. Okay. Another top up. One more go, I reckon, and we'll probably be all right. There we go. Get some nice, nice clean flurry through now without bubbles in. I reckon we're about there. Okay, right. Put the tool to one side. Cool, that feels feels nice. But what I want to do is be careful that I don't squirt any. It shouldn't where it shouldn't be. Yeah, that that feels really good. Feels absolutely lovely. Yeah, that lever feels absolutely perfect okay what we can do is obviously we can check the operation of the clutch now on a japanese sports bike you have um let me just mop up some of the fluid that i spilled from the tool and around the nipple okay on a japanese sports bike obviously you have a uh, oil filler cap on the clutch cover on the triumph the oil filler cap is on the wrong side of the bike, it's on this side. So we can't just take the uh, oil filler cap off, pull the clutch, and then watch for the pressure plate coming backwards and forwards like you can on uh, like the ZX9R, for example, or a Jixxer or something like that. But what we can do is we can um, pop the bike into gear, um, which will obviously lock the rear wheel because obviously it's locked with the engine, and then pulling in the clutch should um, then allow us to turn the wheel, if you get my point. So that's what we'll, we'll do, we'll give it a go. Um, I'm just gonna um, pop the cap on the uh, clutch fluid, just to make sure that none spills anywhere, and then we'll, uh, we'll give it a bash. So, there we are. Gearbox is in neutral. If I knock it in the first, obviously the wheel locks up. If I pull the clutch in, there you go, we can see 
wheel moves nice. As soon as I let the clutch out, there we go. So we know the clutch is working. What we'll do now, um, I'm going to give the bike a little start. I'm just going to rock the, uh, the bike backwards and forwards on the clutch just to make sure that it bites okay and that um, it does pick up. So there we go, as we can see, uh, we've established that the clutch is working absolutely lovely now. Um, and obviously we've got some nice fresh fluid. So what we're going to do now is move on to the rear brake and uh, get all that blood out. Right then, back brake. As you can see, obviously I've taken the, uh, the tail unit off. Um, it's just literally just the seat unit and then a couple of bolts and the whole thing comes off. And the reason why is because this is where the reservoir is. For the, uh, for the rear brake, and you can see this, this rail for the seat comes over the top of it. So it gives you more access by taking the seat unit off, and it's, uh, it's just better all round, really. Obviously, here is the bleed nipple for the rear caliper. As you can see, it's new, and that's because this whole caliper was rebuilt. New pads, everything. Um, new disc, the works. Obviously, if you haven't seen that, um, that episode, then uh, I'll, I'll link it in the top corner, and I'll stick the video uh, link in the description as well. So what we want to do first is obviously... We need to pop the cap off of the reservoir and here it is along with its seal now the fluid in here as you can see actually looks quite quite clean and the reason for that is because it's not that old um, obviously it was replaced when uh, when I rebuilt the caliper but I am going to replace it um, I think it was about eight or nine months ago probably when I actually did that job uh, on this bike but obviously I'm gonna I'm gonna make it so that the brake fluid for all of the systems that require it are in line and uh, there's no point in having um, old fluid in here and new in the front because why would you you know yeah, brake fluid is cheap so as before what I'm going to do is I am going to drain the fluid out of this system with me vacuum tool again I've got me spanner here pop my hose over the top of the bleed nipple create a vacuum and then crack her off and simply maintain the vacuum and here we go as you can see the fluid is coming out through the hose and I can see the reservoir level dropping and eventually we'll probably hear air being sucked in at the reservoir Oops, I'm just going to maintain the vacuum And there we go, I've just seen the last of the fluid disappear out of the reservoir. It's now in the hose. And just keep going until such time as no more fluid comes out. Pretty much there. Yeah, there we go, look. Now we'll just get big air bubbles. And there we are. Right, so that is all of the old fluid out of the system. So uh, what I'll do, I'll get some, uh, I'll get some more of my tissue, give that a good clean out inside. Again, just making sure that there's no dirt or debris in there. And there we go, that looks nice. 
Then, get my fluid, and simply top her up. Now obviously there is a Minimax light mark on the side of the, uh, of the reservoir, but what I'm gonna do is deliberately overfill it. And the reason for that is because obviously we're gonna pull some through. And what I wanna do is have enough to be able to bleed the system out. And then what I'll do is um, keep going till such time as the fluid level gets to the upper mark and then I'll stop bleeding. So, same again, what I'll do, get my tool onto the bleed nipple, create pressure, and open the valve. And pull the fluid through. bubbles coming out right I'm content that there's no more air so what I'm going to do I'm just going to keep going now till the reservoir level gets to the upper mark and then I will close the nipple off a little bit more Tiny bit more, and I reckon that's that. And there we go, that is the fluid refreshed. So now we should have a good firm, oh yeah, that feels really good. That feels nice. And there we go. As you can see, the brake is operating perfectly. Right then, what I need to do, just stick the back on the reservoir that is the job done right what I'm gonna do just close up this a couple of rips that I've dropped there right um, that's the job done all I need to do now put the seat back on the seat unit etc etc but now that is all of the brake and clutch fluid in the Triumph completely replaced and it should be good for uh, another couple of years uh, before it's needed again so yeah, uh, not a difficult job. Um, it's, it depends upon the tools that you use to do it. The brakes, you can get away with using a, a, a jar and a, a little bit of hose. Uh, the clutch can be a little bit more challenging if you're gonna try and employ that method. You, you'll, it is doable, can be difficult. Um, these vacuum pumps, very, very cheap. 12, 13 quid on, on eBay or something like that. Like I said, I'll link it below. And then, you know, they pay for themselves in the time that they save you and the effort. Um, so I highly recommend something like that, especially at the price that they are. Anyway, guys, hopefully you, uh, you like the video um, and you like the series of videos I did with this Triumph. Um, I'm sure I'll have it in the, uh, in the shed again at some point, no doubt, um, for some reason uh, in the future. Um, so yeah, don't, uh, don't think that this is goodbye forever for the Triumph. I'm sure we'll see it again. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for uh, stopping by and uh, I hope to see you again um, in the next video. Take care. Bye bye now.